movements, some of the movements that we've come up with are kind of shamanistic mm-hmm. or sort of, you know, mythological, um, like the one movement, the Icarus movement, mm-hmm. you know, the sort of phoenix rising from the ashes, um, you know, these sort of bird symbols and mm-hmm. this essence of maybe not just flight but hovering and protection. Right. It's like the, the, the flutist sure serves in the beginning almost almost like a shaman. Mm. Somebody who is breathing life into this being who is asleep right. and stirring life in that being. And then the life comes into being, interacts with the spirit that brought it to life, yeah. has its own moments of life, mm-hmm. and then merges again in the end. You know, what's it like for you working with live music in a scene, in this type of situation? Well, because uh, I've worked with live music before, right. but in this, I've never worked hand in hand, like actually touching the, <laughs> the musician, because sometimes that gets kind of hard to do because it interferes with the way, you know, they play, of course. But I've always, as a flute player, um, thought about how dance would be with actually me playing the flute, and but I'm not good enough. Yet. <laughs> next time. Next time. We're gonna do a duet. Right. We're doing a duet next time, so right. you can suffer just like I've suffered. <laughs> right. But anyway, um, it's just kind of magical to be able to interact with somebody who's actually playing an instrument and dancing with them in a physical way mm-hmm. instead of accompanying, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just an accompaniment, it's like together, it's harmony. You it's know? less disjunct. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things that I've noticed as I play with you is that as I, as I can feel and sense that you can hear my breath. Yeah. What's that like for you and, and how does that breath become somebody else's breath become part of it. I mean, I'm sure as a dancer, you often deal with the breath of the other. That's what I was going to say, because as a dancer, we do that all the time, you know, because we breathe with each other in order to do lifts, in order to do turns together, in order, especially in partnering work. So after After collapse, collapse, Uh can you throw me? surprises and challenges of this has been um, I mean I have a lot of experience playing by memory but typically I'm on stage I'm facing out to the audience I go into my zone which feels a little bit like a tunnel Mm -hmm. you know sort of blurry I can sort of see faces there's lights and I kind of create my space and in some instances, I can I photographically will read the music or I'll see moments on the page. Mm-hmm. But what has come as one of the biggest surprises for me as a performing flute player playing by memory and working with dance is that that must be in a different part of my brain. Yeah. Because like there is this clash between where the music is stored and memorized and the fact that at the same time, I have to think of Stepping to the right, then stepping to the left, looking for you, hoping you're there. <laughs> dia, 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 dia. Play it, play it. See, you can play it any way you want to. You don't have to play it, right? A leg, a leg, a leg. Just do three. A leg, 
<laughs> so, um, you know, you've worked with some of the finest dancers in the country and the world, and, and now, and you work with students, but here you are preparing to perform and in the process of collaborating with somebody who is not a dancer and has extremely limited experience of dance. I mean, I really don't have any experience. Um, but you're a good mover. <laughs> okay, so, you know, so what does that mean and, and what is it like for you and what, you know, what has that aspect of this process been like for you as, a, as an artist? I have a way of making non-dancers look like dancers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that's not to be bragging or anything, but it's knowing what steps you give them to highlight their positives and don't give them something that shows their negatives. Mm -hmm. For me, as I perform, being touched has also been very interesting. Hmm. So for example, in that one um, place in the choreography where we do the quote unquote collapse, right. you know, it, it, it feels amazing to actually hear the music go and allow myself to be in a playing position that I would never do mm -hmm. simply on stage as a performer right, because right. it would look extremely odd. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have this permission to move um, in out of the box, um, you know, choreographically, visually. And then on top of it, I can feel like the timing and the rhythm of your, your, your hands on my, on my thigh and around my waist as the collapse happens. Mm -hmm. And I find that that, that has been really wonderful to work with. And, and for me as a flute player, I, one of the things I love about the flute is that, you know, if it's on a table, it makes no noise. But the instant you take it up and you infuse your breath into it, it comes mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. In the same way that like, we bring the music of the composers to life right. as musicians, and you as dancers, Exactly. bring the music to life visually. Exactly. So in essence, there's a lot of connections here. There's a sort mm -hmm. of like, um, you know, me as the instrumentalist bringing you, the dancer who starts in a position on the floor, into life, mm -hmm. the character into right. life. Um, me bringing the instrument into life, us together bringing the music to life in, in our individual ways, and then us bringing that to the audience and basically kind of giving birth and expression to this experience mm -hmm. and this art form.